Because I'm going to the buyer script, the seller script, all of these different scripts, you can get them, not a problem. But let me tell you this, right? First, you have to understand that first concept of these chunks, right? And they can move around and, and split between them. And, and so, so understand that. <laughs> right now we've got people coming in please tell us city and state you're from i've not done this in a long time and i'm so excited to come back to my favorite place lca that's where the party is you guys all right so um talk to me where you're from city and state we'd love to find out more info about you and then i'm going to talk to you about who i am actually hosting today one of my favorite people, one of my very favorite people here, um, Gus Castro. Gus, welcome again, always. He's amazing. Um, he really gives, he's full of information. One of my dear friends, he's, um, you know, we brainstorm a lot in the back end about how we can help other people succeed in this business because we know how crazy this business is. And me being an agent, okay, so we've got so many people here. Look, Gus, we've got Richmond, Long Beach, Vancouver, British Columbia. Welcome, Andrew. See. All right. Yes, thank you so much uh, for joining here. But uh, going back to our topic, how to convert Facebook leads and um, the, the top three scripts. I mean, there's so many scripts, but these are the top three scripts that have really worked for you know for Gus and his power ISA company um and I think this is really really thank you so much Gus for really sharing this info with us because it's always good to to work with like-minded people to really kind of help others to succeed in their business as well so again this is top three scripts for Facebook leads welcome Gus with power right. ISA let's do this Awesome. Thank you so much, Yankee. Thanks, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. You know, really excited about this topic. It is probably one of the ones that people ask me the most about because they're either, you know, uh, they might be complaining about their Facebook leads. There's a lot of complaints. I mean, they, 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 there's a challenge, definitely a challenge with Facebook leads. People always want to know about scripting, what's working, what's not working. Um, and, and, and Facebook is a, has a specific set of challenges. So yeah. I decided to do a talk around this topic, talk about the top Facebook scripts that we use. And I want to set the table uh, for the topic. I want to make sure people understand the Facebook scenario, kind of where it is, because I think one of the main issues with Facebook leads and the frustration a lot of people face with Facebook leads is that they're, oh, they're just not motivated. They don't pick up. You know, I'm not able to make headway with these folks, all that kind of stuff, right? So right. I think number one, let's set that table. Let's set the scenario, folks. So Facebook, Matt, it's a pretty big company. Actually, just, their parent company, Meta, just changed their name. They've been in the news recently, right? Let's just say they have a lot of users. That, that's the, that's, let's start from there. I don't think that's a controversial part of it. A lot of people are on Facebook. A lot of people spend a lot of time on Facebook. The unique thing about Facebook versus the Zillow's and the Realtor.com's or your own personal agent website, people are not on Facebook to look for homes. Not typically. Let's just say, call it that. They're not typically in Facebook to look for homes. So you're kind of catching them in the middle of something else. They're looking at pictures from their friends, from their grandkids, from their, uh, you know, work from people from work, their social circle. They're, you know, looking at the news. People get, a lot of people get their news from Facebook. They're, they're fighting over whatever on Facebook. Exactly. Because there's all these different reasons people get in there. Facebook groups. Oh my goodness. That's a huge, you know, uh, area as well. People jump into these groups talk about their different topics. There's always something taking you there. However, it's not typically a purchasing decision. It's not always a, 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 basically a house browsing decision. It's not really that, right? So the goal of Facebook is to put something in front of them that gets people attention, right? Gets their attention. And, we, and, and I've done other talks on Facebook ads and, and that part. Look them up. Look up my name on the, on the awesome LCA what, you know, YouTube channel. I've talked about Facebook ads. But I'm going to summarize. The goal of the ad is to get you to stop scrolling. Stop exactly. scrolling. Don't exactly. do it anymore, right? I, I was running ads uh, uh, this last month, and I looked at these numbers. I hadn't looked at them in a while. Folks, something like 80, between 80 and 90% of the leads that I get on my Facebook campaigns are on mobile right now. 
80 to 90 percent of them right and i'm not targeting a super young demographic like it's the kids no 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 i target you know for older folks uh, people that are adults professionals that's who i want to talk to that's who i want to work with they're 80 90 percent on mobile everyone's on mobile right so you want people someone to, to stop that scrolling activity your thumb is going wild going to the next thing going to the next thing you want to grab somebody's attention right that's the starting point that's right. the starting point. Right. That's what, what getting someone's attention, step number one, getting them to give you their information, step number two, following up, following, following up, step number three. But once you get in contact with someone, mm-hmm. once you actually get them on the phone, you start a two-way conversation with them, that that's is when, when scripting comes into play. And that's when, what is, what is the saying? Tire hits the road or the rubber hits this or whatever it is. <laughs> That's when that happens, you guys, because listen, it's all about what you say, how you say, how many times you say it, and what are you saying to build that relationship? What are you saying to come from contribution? I think that is so massive. And and some of these scripts do have that, Gus. So share with us a little bit about like what what is the first thing that you train your ISAs with? And I, um, you know, what do you train them with in order to pick up the phone and say, what? Now here comes the lead. What is your next step? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I'm going to jump into that. And, and actually, the first thing that we teach people is when you're using a script, right? When you're using that, we actually mix it up and we tell them, right? Because sometimes people approach scripting in a very square way, in a very, um, you know, uh, uh, like ro- they're concerned about the robotic sense, the right. salesmanship of scripting. They're, and I've done, had these conversations in lab code agents and if you want to start a fire in lab code agents, talk about scripting, right? What's your favorite script? Oh, I don't want to sound like a robot. Oh, I don't want to sound like this. I don't want to sound like that. Right? Don't make it, it your own is what I say. A hundred percent. The big thing about scripting is, Gus, you got to embed it. And this is, again, what we teach in our academy. you got to embed the script. And that's exactly. the same thing you teach as well, is that embed the script. You cannot be so verbatim on the phone because they'll catch on. And guess what? At that time, you're like, um, click. They hung yeah. up. It's the easiest thing for the consumer to do. I'm out of here. This is not really a, an appealing conversation or they right. just want to get you off the phone, right? That's that's the result you don't want. If you're sounding very scripted, very robotic, you're not doing a very good job with that script. That's my opinion. That's my answer to that objection. Oh, I don't want to sound scripted. Do, do actors in Hollywood sound like they're reading off a page? Well, of course not, right? right. That, they, they, sound, they sound very natural in their scripting. It sounds like it's a real scenario for them, like a real situation. That's exactly what the, the goal of the script. And, and I 100% agree with you, Yankee. The, the script is the guide. You have to embed it. You have to make it your own. What we do to help with that process, because that's easier said than done. You really have to work on this to make it like embed it and make it part of your own. What we do, and I actually want to show you an example of this. I'm going to show you an example. This is our, this by far is our number one script for Facebook. I'm going to show it. And by the way, folks, don't screenshot it. Don't try to do something. Uh, We're going to give this away at the end. So, So hang on there. If you want this script word for word, you can get it. But trust me when I tell you, that it will not be worth it without the explanation. It will not be worth it without the explanation. I'll tell you why. So uh, can you see my screen? Everybody see my screen now? Yep, we see Great. you. So the way we structure our scripts to favor and promote the embedding, which I love that term, I absolutely love that, is that we split them into chunks. They're like bite-sized chunks. And they're designed to kind of uh, 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 work independently of each other. And they're almost like bullet points. They're almost like bullet points. It's like, hey, don't forget to ask about this. Hey, don't forget to bring up this topic. Right. The reason that our scripts don't bleed into one to the other is because in real life, people will jump around in the script. You're, you're not sure where it's going to go, right? right? So organizing the script, we have, we have a, a pretty set in stone introduction. This part is probably the only part of the script where we do require folks to use that memorization, that practice, to make sure that comes out concisely, very fresh, very to the point, very upbeat, um, and to make sure that's solid from the get-go. That's the part that I go is is important. Everything else that happens after that Mm -hmm. can be dynamic. 
All it's right. and add, add a personal touch to it. And most of all, listen to what the other exactly. person says. Exactly. I was just about to say that, Gus. You know, a lot of times we get the phone, the phone rings here and they're, they're solicitors, right? And they're so scripted. It's so <laughs> frustrating. So yes. again, with this script, like Gus said, he's giving this away. Thank you so much, Gus. I think with this script is that you've got to embed the script. Now, I always say, build the relationship. First, yeah. come from gratitude. Thank you. And then dive into whatever you need to ask. But again, keep in mind, your message should be clear and concise when you're talking to them. And again, embed the script. Do not go verbatim because they're going to hang up on you. In any kind of script, it's not only this script, right, Gus? Yeah, a hundred percent. So we 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 this this helps in that embedding process. Just understand that they're like modules. They're like chunks. One can go first. One can go last. We do require folks to go cover them all. At least attempt to cover them all. And and, and these questions are are reminders. They are prompts. We don't hold people to reading them word for word. Exactly. Get the point across right. Exactly. And, and use the different techniques. Which is it starts with listening listening to the other person, mirroring their tonality, their pace, their intensity. You really want to do all of those things come into play. But when you're, when you're asking someone about, hey, if you're, are you already working with a real estate agent? Awesome. When would you like to be in your new home? You never, ever want to say the word timeline. What does that even mean, right? No one, no right. one talks that way when right. you talk about timeline. You can't right. go out there and ask, what's your timeline for that? Well, I'm like, I don't have this written down on a, on a, on a schedule, right? right. That's, a very, that's a very scripted uh, uh, question. Use, ask a question that an actual regular person would ask, right? When would you like to be in your new home? Great. Right. When, did, when do you see yourself in that new property? When do you want right. that awesome thing you're talking about? When would you like to make that awesome thing happen? That is a much more effective way. And here's another thing, Gus. We can all, uh, and I, my ISAs always say this do you see yourself moving in 30, 60, or 90 days, right? Give them I, a timeline. Like, actually say that. Hey, I was just out of curiosity, 30, 60 or 90 days. You know, when do you see yourself moving into your new home? 30, 60 or 90 days, right? Something of that sort. So, you know, are these time wasters or are they like, they probably might just say, oh, we're not sure we're not in a rush. You know, what's going to come at that point when they say you're not in a rush, say, no, no problem. You know what I say, Gus? Hey, you're not in a rush, but market values are in a rush. So it's up to you. You have to decide what you want to do. When they come to my Zoom consult, that's exactly what I say, Gus, is yeah. I'm not going to waste my time. I'm not going to waste their time. If they're not in a rush, how do we say, all right, see you later. I don't want to work with you, sort of, you know, and, yeah. and then really kind of, really kind of um, eliminate the time wasters, so to speak, right? Because you want to make sure that you get the ready, willing, and able to buyers, right? So yeah, that is it's, it's especially in this market. We're talking yes. about recording this in the winter of 2022. Exactly. Folks, I don't think I've ever seen, again, this is, I probably say this every year, but it, it gets truer and truer every year. Yes. Uh, such a difficult uh, uh, environment for buyers in this market, right? So right, absolutely, right. Yankee, you've got to go and, and, and got to go right and be direct with people and and, and, and educate them on you what the market to. is like, and, right? And, if, and, and Gus, here's another thing we do. And I, oh my, like I said, we, we got to, we got to talk. Another thing I do is a Zoom consult and I show them statistics. I have so much like I want to share with them, but I always do my work ahead of time, whether they're a seller or whether they're a buyer, right? Once I get them on a Zoom call, I want to share with them stats and data. Again, stop yourself from wasting your time with the no sayers if they you need to be very careful of your time and protect your time that's that's what i believe in because i want to protect my time you know yeah. because we it's so busy with showings and listings gus it's really really busy so you this first script is so important correct it's so yeah, important to nail down absolutely exactly yes. what you want to say it, it absolutely is. And I think one of the key things that you touched on, which I want to go uh, in depth on, is the topic of objections. What you mentioned right now, you know, oh, I, I'm, not in a, I'm not in any rush. Oh, I'm, I'm a year out. All of those, all of those, when, when they're not following the happy path into the script, which we, we call that the happy path. When we're role playing. We want to give someone a shot and try and go through the happy path at least once. 
which is they're flowing to the next question, to the next question, the next question. That rarely happens, by the way. So what happens in the middle? Why aren't people following the happy path? They're giving you an objection. That all right. of those things are objections. Right. So in my very humble opinion, the challenge, the interesting part of the scripting of, of having a conversation with the lead is the objection handling. That is really it, right? That is another chunk. It's another, it's a specific question and it should have a scripted response. It should have a scripted response. If you don't have a great response to the, to the objection of, oh, I'm not in any rush. Oh, I'm a year out now. I'm, I'm out there. No, 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 yeah. no. I don't want to do anything right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that, then you have to have a scripted response to that because the number one thing is you want to vet them. You want to verify. Is that real? Or is that not real? Is and, that, are you, yeah, are you just and, saying and, that? Because you say that to anyone that's trying exactly. to get them to buy a home or is that like a, a, a sincere response? And now how can you get them to really understand? So we had a buyer, we had a seller buy a consult. He was a buyer and a sell. What we did is we went on the Zoom consult with him and showed him stats and data. And he was a guy who said, oh, I'm not in a rush. Well, you're not in a rush. We are not buying in 30, 60, 90 days. Let's sit down and actually share market analysis, shall we? Guess what? He's like, I want to buy now after looking at that data of how, exactly. where the market is going or how the market is headed with the interest rates and all of that, they will change their mind in a heartbeat. Exactly. And guess what? He went pending just two days ago. Oh, well, there you go. Now, right? that, two weeks six, ago. Success Gus, story. Yeah, and, Gus, two weeks ago, he was, he was at 90 days plus <laughs> out. Exactly. Oh, I'm not, to... I'm not doing anything right now. Well, exactly. well Let's talk exactly. about that. And that's you, should, you should have a scripted response to, to, to that objection. For example, one of the one objection handler that I really, really like, uh, this is from Barry Jenkins, another contributor to Labquit Agents. Awesome, awesome, awesome agent. I, I stole Barry. this yeah. one from him because I like it so much. When someone says, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not an engineer. I'm a year out. I'm not, not even 90 days. Now. I'm a year out. No, yeah, I'm, I'm a year away from purchasing. I'm just getting started. What Barry says, and I love this, is saying, oh, hey, I appreciate when someone plans that far ahead you yeah. know, because I can't even plan for dinner. So <laughs> tell me a little bit more about this plan. So yeah. the, I love that objection handler because it throws in some humor. It disarms right. the other person. Like, ha, right. well, that's, I, I get it, right? Yeah. But, but it you, also challenges them, right? It says, right. okay, great. What is holding you back right. from doing right. something sooner? But you don't go as direct as that. You want right. to be subtle and go, yeah, but tell me what that plan is. I'm, I'm curious because I can't even plan dinner. How are you planning a year ahead of time? Right. What, why are you waiting a year? Essentially, yeah. that's what you're asking. Right? Exactly. But you're putting it nicely in a nice way and kind of like being very subtle about it. Here's another thing that I use also, Gus. I always say when they say that they're not in a rush and, and uh, they are, they're looking a year out, I always go about saying, all right, well, sounds good. That's a, you know, that's a good game plan to have. Now tell me, what about in a year are you really looking for? Like, are you looking, are you more interested in knowing if the prices will increase? Because listen, market is, market is not waiting for you or me. Market is going to continue to rise. So um, it's okay to wait, but are you okay to pay? And then you need to dive into the script of really sharing with them verbally. Are you okay with paying a higher interest rate? Uh, just out of curiosity, are you, in, you know, like ask them that question. For me, that has worked wonders. So like, uh, no, we thought the interest rate- Create urgency. Going, you create urgency, thought, fear exactly. of missing out, FOMO. And, right. And we thought the interest rates were going to stay this way all year long. Well, guess what? No, they're not. You know, you got to keep them thinking and on their feet. So I love that. So script number two, Gus. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And before we cut off, I think it's so I think it's so important on this first script because I think the script itself is, is important and it's definitely a key piece of it. The execution, I see is where people can struggle. Right. So I'm going to give these scripts away. So don't worry about it. You'll get the script. Not right. an issue. But I do want to drive another point home. And that is so, so, so important for folks to understand. Right. It is the, the action, the activity of building rapport. Right. right. That is the goal throughout these exercises. Because I'm going to the buyer script, the seller script, all of these different, different scripts, you can get them. Not a problem. But let me tell you this, right? First, you have to understand that first concept of these chunks, right? And they can move around and, and split between them. And so, so understand that. Embedding it, putting your personal touch on it, also very important. But here's the other part, building rapport, guys. Building rapport, that is the game, right? Whoever, I'm almost, for me, it's like 
when people, when I see a team or a real estate agent that is excellent at converting internet leads, they can take a source, even like Facebook. Folks, Facebook doesn't convert at 10, 15, 20% to, 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 to transaction. It doesn't. But the top people can convert Facebook leads at three, four, five percent to transaction, to transaction, right? That is an excellent convert. Out of a hundred Facebook leads, you get three, four deals. You're excellent at the follow-up and at the conversion. What I see with those teams and those agents is they are really, really good at having conversations and building rapport with these leads very quickly. They right. can build rapport very, very quickly. For me, and, and for you as well, Yaki, I know you do this, the challenge is, well, how do I teach people to build rapport, right? And for me, it's at scale. I have 120 people on my team, right? Yeah. How do I teach 100 people how to build rapport? It's tell, It's easier said than done, right? It's a, definitely a challenge, but there's a few things that you need to do that we've seen that can really move the needle, uh, uh, that, that can build rapport very, very quickly. I mentioned one already, the importance of listening to what the other person is saying, right. folks. Right. I can always tell when I have a new ISA uh, or someone that's just started out when they are talking over the other person constantly, right? They're, they're, they're running into each other. They're not letting the other person get a word in edgewise. Remember the, old, the age old saying, Whoever asks the questions is in and, the driver's seat. Is in the driver's seat, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You're controlling so the conversation. The person that talks the most, most. Uh, uh, is is the one that's kind of giving you the information, right? The person exactly. you don't want to be the person that talks the most. Exactly. You want to ask the right questions. Now we you cannot ask good questions if you're not listening. It's so important right. to do that. And we also see between couples, that's the thing. The oh. couple that talks the most is not the decision maker, guys. It's the silent one. Remember that. Okay, so here's another thing I want to talk about really quickly, building relationships, right? You talk a little bit about that. And last year, all our leads, most of our leads were Facebook leads that we converted, 71 of those, right? Oh, no, 60, awesome. 60 of those, sorry. Um, 60 or 61 of Excellent. those. Excellent. And the others are obviously in the pipe in the lender pipeline and we're converting, we've converted them and now they're that's why I said 71. But the point is there's 60 Facebook leads that we converted last year and closed on. What I've learned from that, Gus, is building that relationship. You hit it right there. Is that you know you've got to build that relationship. How do you do that, right? What is the system? What do you say? When you say, how many times you say it is going to be very important. Now, who are you saying that to? Figure out their disc profile when you're talking to them. Look who talks fast. Look who's talking um, quietly. Look who's watching. Which one is really, you know, listen to them. And then, obviously, that's one of the reasons I do a Zoom with us because that really helps me understand. So now, make important. sure both the husband and wife are there. And then I can really nail it down. Listen to the tonality. That's another thing in the scripts practice. You've got to listen to the tonality and how they're saying it to you. What is the yeah. speed of their, you know, language and all of that good stuff. Script yeah. number two. So, yeah, no, so 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 important. And, and, and yeah. kind, of, kind of finishing that point, I think everything you said is absolutely correct. The ways that we teach folks how to build rapport, how to build rapport, is the next thing is, I said listening, right? The next right. thing is, this is, again, this is hard to teach, but the concept is so important. Showing genuine curiosity. Yeah. Show genuine curiosity. I'm not a saying. curiosity. Yeah. So important. You can't script that. I'm sorry. I wish I could. I wish I could put that in the script. It is, they say something and the next question doesn't come on the script. It's about what they just said, right? Exactly. For example, oh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of relocating. Uh, that's why I need to sell my home. Oh, that's really interesting. Where you're relocating to, right? Because the, the, there's a lot of reasons I want to really answer that question. I want to know are they move, are they selling and, and buying in my same community, in my same market, in another market? What what you know? What kind of the opportunity is this? It doesn't really matter the, the motivation. Showing the genuine interest right. is really the most important thing. I always right. tell folks really really exercise that sense of curiosity, right? That sense of wanting to understand who, who the other person is. What's their motivation? If you show, and this comes from Dale Carnegie, people have read that those books about Dale and all his tips. This is what he said almost 100 years ago, well, 80 years ago. He's saying, show some genuine interest, because even back in the 30s when he wrote that book, 
people did not like phony interest. I mean, that hasn't changed. That's actually a, 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 not different it's, from a yeah. hundred years ago, right? right and they were right. already doing a lot of sales back then. It was, this is already in the literature, guys. Phony interest, anyone can spot that and, 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 can, and is not gonna be responsive to it. Showing genuine interest right. is really, really important. One thing that also is really, you mentioned what are you gonna say and how many times you're gonna say it. One of the things that matches that uh, recommendation are power phrases. We, right. we use power them as words. Power, phrase, uh, power words, right? right? Power words. And and using them in an upbeat kind of high energy way. Yes. For, so when you say, yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Finish your example. Oh, I, I, I want I want I want to do a quick role play with you. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you an example of the power phrases that I like to hear. So uh, you know we're we're doing ring ring, like hey there is this Yankee. Yes. Excellent, Yankee. I saw. I'm going to use the script we have right here. Hey, you know, I got a message from you through Facebook. I saw that you're interested in buying a new property here in. I forgot what your market is. You know, here in Sacramento. Um, you know, are you looking to purchase something in the near future, or are you just getting started, Yankee? I'm just getting started. I don't know what I'm looking for. Oh, that's great. No, that's great to hear. I'm here to help you out. Tell me a little bit. What do you think you're looking for? What do you, what, do you, what are you looking for right now? What do you think? You know, I don't know yet. Maybe two bedrooms, three bedrooms, four bedrooms, five bedrooms. I have no idea. Oh, not, not a problem. I'm here to help, right? So regardless of the answer I'm giving you, I'm happy to hear it, I'm right? Happy to help. I, I'm, yeah. I'm keeping it upbeat. I'm keeping it positive. Maybe Yanki has no clue what she's looking for. That's great because that's why I'm here to help you, Yanki. Right. That's awesome. And if you know exactly what you're looking for, even better. Like, great, because I can help you find that right away. And I want to send you properties that match that criteria. Right. Wow, this is amazing. Wow, this is the best uh, situation ever, right? So, and I know what some people are saying, oh, no one talks that way. So of course, folks, of course, you do want to match their, you do want to mirror was, their energy yeah. and tonality as well, as well. Yeah. So you're not going to be as yeah. high energy as Gus is on this call, it's, but you can use power phrases in less of a caricature way, less of a cartoonish way. Okay. But, but the power phrases help remind you that you're supposed to be upbeat and you want to accentuate and, and you want to sound, you know, positive on that call and you're helping them and you're moving things forward. So those things, listening, uh, uh, join that genuine curiosity and using those power phrases have been some of the ways that we've systematized, mm -hmm. systematized the process of building rapport rapidly, rapid rapport building, right? Those are some right. of the building blocks that we use, some of the building blocks we use unbelievably important right so right. great so the, the next thing we want to talk about the next script right which is one of our top scripts another area you need to understand and dominate is the home valuation facebook script this is and people love and people are like, oh sellers sellers we're talking sellers so i want to i want to you know do a quick preamble on the on the seller value, home valuation script they, uh, everyone wants sellers. I want sellers. You want, everybody wants them. If they were as easy to generate on Facebook as buyer leads, we wouldn't be having this conversation. No one would exactly. care. Oh, that's, that's easy, Gus. Actually, it's not easy. It's not easy. The home valuation script is a starting point. And this is the script. This is the lead type, the scenario where I've seen the greatest variability. They might be five years out and they're at the top of your funnel, or they could be three months out, right? You get everything in, in this funnel. They might be, they might not even be homeowners and they're in a home valuation funnel. Uh, the, the, it's, it can be all over the place, folks. So uh, that I want to preamble because this is a challenging scenario. It's a challenging script. But once you're in that, once you're talking to someone in that scenario, in that script, uh, it is unbelievably important to understand, okay, great. Let's have a conversation. Let's chat. Hey, Yankee, I saw you click through Facebook. You're interested in knowing the value of your home. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, awesome. That's great. Excellent, excellent. Can you tell me a little bit more about that property? You want to start the conversation. You're, you're, whether they're refinancing their home, selling their home, they're a looky-loo that you don't know yet, right? So the last thing you want to do is start that script, but do you want to sell or not? Yeah, I'm not going to tell you that. coming out too strong, right? And that's coming on too strong again. Way come out strong. of curiosity, come from contribution. I always say with the with the home evaluation, I always say give. You'd rather give them and say, okay, that's it. Don't ask for a listing appointment immediately because exactly. guess what? 
There's so many places that they've probably clicked on and they're getting bombarded with agents calling them, right? So you want to do it a different way. You want to actually come from contribution, but show them the urgency of the marketplace. How do you do that? I think obviously another script, but again, be very genuine, be authentic, and you know, really pay interest in what they're trying to tell you here, right? Because yeah. it's not about you at that moment, whether you get the listing or not, it's about genuine advice you wanna share with them. And watch what happens, because again, whether you realize or not, you're building that relationship. Yeah, right? absolutely, 100%. It is really, really important because the most challenging part that I've seen in this seller script, in this seller scenario, is getting them to trust you. And right. show, because the sellers know they have a valuable asset. The sellers know they're going to have agents knocking down their, their door, door trying what to get that listing. They right. know that. They don't what want is, to show you their cards. They don't. It's not in right. their best interest to. And what is your value proposition? What are you going to offer exactly. to them? How are you going to be different from some, especially when it comes to listings? What makes you a better seller, a better listing agent than the other one right down the street from you? Yeah, That's a question absolutely. That asked. Absolutely. So yeah, and, and that kind of go, going down that, that seller uh, uh, scenario, the script, you want to ask them about the property and use everything we talked about. Listen to that, react, show some curiosity and the power of phrases. Oh, tell me about that kitchen. Oh, you know, we did this, we did that. Wow, that sounds like an amazing kitchen. You've done a really good job. But what's the square footage of the property? Oh, it's this much. That's a very spacious home. Those are going like crazy right now. You want to drop some of those breadcrumbs about what the market desires, right? When they're done describing that property, like, great, I have all the information I can send you. I'll send you a more detailed home valuation, but I want to ask you one thing first. This is looking like a really awesome property. One of those properties that we've had a lot of success generating multiple offer situations. I'd love to send you some information on how we create those bidding wars, how we help manage them, how we get our clients top dollar. And here's another thing that's really important, help them manage. Because if you know they're selling a home because they're gonna buy a home, that is a treacherous scenario, folks, right? That's difficult to do effectively. How we help our, our, our clients manage that situation and how we're a full service, insert your value proposition, how we're a full service uh, a team and helps in every step of that process. I'd love to show that to you. Do you think that's useful for you? Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, maybe. Okay. Okay. If they, if they, so if they give you any kind of an inch, let's go from that. Right. right. Go to the next question. Right. Excellent. Well, tell me about your situation. Mm. I haven't asked them to sell. I haven't asked them to list. I haven't asked them for the appointment. Right. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get the conversation started. Yankee. With these kind of leads, they're very delicate. They right. understand that they're the top of the market right now. They understand exactly. how valuable they are. And they the person know, that yeah. builds that relationship first is going to win. The right. person that builds a relationship first is going to win with them. It's yeah. still important to do that. And guess what, folks? Some of these seller leads are six months out. Some of them actually are a year out. And it might be for a very valid reason. Don't stop building that relationship. It's the number one issue I see with these seller or these home valuation needs. Oh, it's I, they want them to be like the Zillow, Realtor.com. They want them to do something immediately. It's just not how that works. No, if you can build a right. pipeline of these home valuation leads that you've built a relationship with, right. that the next time you call them, they know who the heck is even calling, then, then your likelihood of winning goes up exponentially. But it exactly. starts with that conversation with that connection and being just not being genuine. not being salesy, being genuine, showing that genuine curiosity and getting into the topic of if you're selling, I'm not saying you're selling, but if you were, this is what you could get in this market, in that neighborhood, in this area. I know that because we just did A, B and C in that area. We just got, you know, Bobby down the road, this kind of situation. And guess what? That was not an easy transaction because of this situation that happened. Right. I'd love to talk to you more about that because it's so important to whatever it is. I'm making this up right now, Donkey, because I don't know what your situation, what your value proposition is, but but I know you need one, right? Because you absolutely right. need to go in value first to get a conversation with them. I, uh, I, but I recommend don't talk about are you selling your home or not? When are you selling? Get me a listing no. appointment. When do we set the appointment? No, 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 no. Go right. in there, understand the scenario, throw those breadcrumbs, and then see if they, that can lead you to some interest. And the interest will set the appointment itself. Their exactly. genuine interest in your value proposition 
is going to lead them there anyway. And that is so delicate. It's a delicate process. It's important to understand that. And if it doesn't lead to that appointment, that face-to-face meeting, that's okay, folks. You might get them on the next try when you're checking in. Yeah, and keep in mind, consistency is key in our business. If we consistently follow up, I mean, just don't be after the script. I mean, a lot of times people say, okay, I want that script. I want to learn that script. But really, how are you going to learn that script? Of course, practicing it, right? Because we do need to do a lot of accountability and practice. But more than anything, it's about consistency and how you say it, when you say it, how many times you say it to get that appointment. There's so many different ways to say it too, right? And that's another thing we have, we teach is the systems, the tools, like what are we really saying about you know, that seller, what, 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 how are we finding out their urgency and their motivation? I think those are the true, um, true questions that you should be asking yourself is how am I going to not convert, but how am I going to actually genuinely be for there for this client when they're ready? And if you do it consistently, like follow up consistently, send them market updates, market reports, pop buys, um, you know, buy a letter, so whatever that might be they will really say, okay, this agent has been go- been over here, uh, you know, sharing, uh, gone above and beyond to share the information with me. I think it's time that we sit down and talk about really what do I want to do with this home? Yeah, absolutely. That's where you uh, want to get so that. So important, so important. And it can take one touch. It can take two touches. It can take multiple touches. Yeah. Yanki, is it worth your time to get a listing in this market? Is it absolutely. worth that effort to do that? Absolutely. Do what it takes is what I say, because guess what? Listing is always the name of the game. And, but here's another thing I always say, don't, because for one listing, they're going to be 10, 20 different realtors, right? Um, they're going to be after this. So don't only focus on listings, also focus on buyers. A lot yes. of people get turned off in this market with buyers, but I say, don't do that. Because you know what? Sometimes those buyers are your true sellers. Why? Yes. They might have something to sell, but they're not telling you right now. They might yes. have a friend. They might have an investment property out of country. I mean, out of state. Who knows? So be genuine. Ask the right questions. Script number three, Russ. Yeah. So script number three. So this is a little bit of a, of a, of a trick there. The script number three is actually the combination of both of these scripts. It is yeah. exactly what you just said, Yanni. Yeah. I love the I love the segue. <laughs> <laughs> it is the buyer seller script. I it is the buyer seller script. Yeah. That's a great example because I, I share the exact same philosophy, Yaki. The number one way you should be looking for sellers in this market is finding which of your buyers have properties to sell. And depending on what area you are in the country, you might have folks that are relocating from out of state. They have a property to sell. This is happening all over Texas and Florida. Holy cow, they're getting listing referrals left and right in other right. states. In the Northeast, out West, uh, they're getting all those listing referrals. For folks that move within, they're moving up to a larger property, maybe scaling down to a smaller property, they have a home to sell as well. In some markets, I'm not going to lie, uh, there might be 5% of your buyers are going to be sellers as well. In some right. of them, it can be high as 20 to 30% of your buyers can be sellers, right? So unbelievably important uh, to understand those percentages. Where are you at? Are you at? Because the only number I don't believe is zero. Folks, right. they're just not being honest with you. Let's just say, let's call it what it is. They're not letting you know they have a property to sell because they understand that's really important. It's a big part of their, of their. Uh, they want to keep that card really, really close. It's a valuable asset. Like you said, Dunkey, they might have somebody in mind to sell their property. They're talking right. to you about the next one, right? But they have, might have somebody already in mind. If they have not signed anything, if they're not completely committed, then you want to make sure, hey, well, you always win when you do a comparison, right? right? Another Barry Jenkins script that I love, I love this script. I'm also stealing this one from Barry, is that when someone discloses, you know what, I have an agent I'm thinking about to help me on the, I'm good on the listings that I have an agent for that. Or even on the buy side, oh, I have an agent that I'm already talking to. And you know what Barry said? I love this script. He goes, well, you know what? That is outstanding that you have that relationship and you're being upfront about it. He actually congratulates them. For I do that help. too. Oh Not my all, God. I, love, I love that too. I love that. Yeah. They're being very upfront and they actually thank them. Let, thank you much for letting Some people don't do that and we respect that, right? And then the next phrase is, are you, are you firmly committed? Have you signed anything with them yet? Because yeah. if you haven't, 
then it's, it's all fair game. Yeah, it Let's is all fair game. Because if you have it, you know, I would love to show you what we bring to the table. Absolutely. Because when people compete for your service, they win. And, exactly. it's, and it's okay for you to think about yourself and pick the best solution because this is the most valuable asset you have. You want to make sure you're going with the best option, right? Worst case, Yankee, you get even more ideas to share with your friend on how to get that property sold. What do you think about that? Oh, right. So it's hard to say no to that. It's hard right. to say no to that. And, and so, there are times, hard. right. And there's sometimes, I mean, we, we get so many calls with the newsletters that we send out to our, um, you know, to our uh, CRM. And we get a lot of calls and some of the, sometimes they're working with agents and sometimes I just say, okay, well, you know what? Your agent should be sending you this information. Or sometimes I say, huh, okay, so have you signed anything? Are you committed to that agent? Ah, uh, no, you know, we're not, whoever gives us the home, that's who we're going to go to. I said, okay, so here it is right here. You're telling me you're not sincere about working with an agent, but guess what? I don't work with clients if you don't have an agency disclosure signed. So are you okay with that? You know, I mean, I'm straightforward with them because again, you're not being fair to your agent right now at this moment, yes. but how are you going to be, how are you going to commit to me is yeah. what I want to know. Right. So yeah. sometimes Absolutely. you have to and, and, play it a little hard. You got to play that hard ball with them because again, it's about protecting your time. Right. It, it is. And, and, and you should have a scripted uh, a response to that. You have to have that scripted down. Because again, and it's about educating your client as well. This exactly. is an unbelievably competitive buyer environment, right? Yeah. I'm only going to be committed to sharing my knowledge and all my tools and everything that I have. With the, I'm, I'm going to be committed to the folks that are willing to commit to me. And if you don't, that's all right. But right. I do need to ask the question. If we're going to, I'm going to take you to the finish line. I need to know you're willing to sign this document. Exactly. That tells me that you're serious. How about that? And, and here's the thing. Another thing I say to Russ, when I say, see them face-to-face -face on a consult, I'm really, listen, you don't have to work with me and neither do I. I don't need to work with you. I have, a, you know, I really genuinely say that. I don't need to work with you. I don't have to work with you. I really like to work with my clients who really get to know me and how my systems work. And the reason why we get an agency disclosure signed is yada, yada, yada. Right, so I think it's very important. Here's your value proposition. I don't exactly. want to waste your time. I don't want to work with you if you're just going to be looking or if you're just working with 10 different realtors. I do not work with those clients. I have that option, right? Exactly. Um, but you got to be careful. You got to make sure that you protect your time. Whatever it is, when you're converting, when you're asking for urgency, when you're actually getting the motivation out from them, listening to their tonality. I mean, we've covered some great topics here. Yeah. Like uh, it's your a great relationships. one. This, this should have been called scripting masterclass. Not, yes. not, not just, this applies to more than just Facebook. Facebook has some unique challenges, but this applies yeah. to more than just Facebook. So for the folks asking for, for a copy of the script that we talked about, so the one I'm sharing is that buyer seller kind of brings everything together. That's the one I'm putting out there. Jake, can you drop the link to that? Folks, uh, you can jump on there. Get the, get, if the only thing I request is that you sign up for, for my newsletter. You can subscribe if you want. I won't, my feelings won't be hurt, uh, but, but please check it out. I think you'll find some really valuable tips and tricks in there, uh, but check out that script. If you have any questions on the one, you should, you have to get to give them the link to this uh, uh, talk, Jake, to everyone, because on this call, we went above and beyond what's in that script. Let me just tell you that, right? Because the script is designed to be the guide. It's designed right. to be the scribe. And the only thing you really should really learn are those objection handlers. The responses to those objections are probably the most important part of the script to really learn and memorize. Everything else should help you navigate from one chunk to the next. So I'm going to share that with you folks. Check it out. If you have any questions about it, shoot me a message. I'd love to chat with you about the scripting, about the scenario we're talking about. But that is the guide that we use. That The, the script we're sharing with you today, that's the one that we use at Power ISA. That's the starting point to apply the listening, the rapport, the power phrases, and the objection handling. With and one those thing, four things, you're going to be successful with these. Right. And one thing I do want to close out by saying, Gus, is that embed your own personality of course because if you keep it scripted these scripts are not going to be any good to you um i think it's very important even with the buyer seller we like i said last year was all buyer seller for us how do you transition and make sure with, with the non-contingency offer that you're putting in for your buyer for your 
seller that who is also a buyer. I mean, those scripts also are very important to talk about, but we're running out of time right now. So yes, absolutely. Next, that's the next right? one. That's, that should be the topic of the next one. Next one. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you so much again. This is being recorded. Ladies and gents, thank you so much for your time. Talk to you soon, Gus. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.